Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a bunch of interesting topics, but first things first, we gotta cover this Toronto Pro, the upcoming show this weekend, and we got a couple of very interesting updates of these bodybuilders that are doing this show, and we're starting, obviously, as you can see, with Ian Valier, who is currently probably the favorite to win this show. Should he be the favorite, though? I would say no. I would say Hassan Mustafa is the guy that should be the favorite because he's just so much more complete than Ian. I mean, what body parts does Ian have, really? Like, if you take a look at his physique, if you're being honest, if you truly dissect his physique, body part or body part, his shoulders could be bigger, his arms could be better, his chest could definitely be bigger and better, same thing goes with his back, same thing I would say it goes with his quads, like the, the, the outer sweep could be bigger, the only body part that he has that is like complete would be his glutes. So it's not really much of a body part. And overall, he's always super shredded, diced, as he will be at this show as well. And he's very big. He's a massive guy. He's like close to 270. And that's why I'm such a big fan of Ian. I mean, first of all, I'm a big fan of Fuad's podcast. I used to watch, listen to Ian for a long, long time. And I always liked him. I always liked his rationale and how he's always super logical and uh, his intellect. Like, he's a, he's a cool guy. I like him. But as far as his physique, I like his physique because it's not the best structure ever. He has the ability, though, to get super shredded and to get super massive. And he's a workhorse. He does not have God-given genetics, you know, as far as shape, as far as structure and that kind of stuff. But he really made the best out of the cards that he was dealt with. And that's why I like him, that's why I respect him, and that's why I think he is the favorite to win this show. But if I was gonna be more exact, more precise, the real reason why I have him winning this show and beating Hassan Mustafa is this shot here, especially compared to the side shot of Hassan Mustafa that he posted as well, the glute difference. Now, the reason why Hassan hasn't really been placing super high in the past was his conditioning, and especially conditioning in his glutes and hamstrings. And here you can see his glutes look soft, they don't look super shredded. However, he is prepped by Chris Asito, so there could be some kind of Chris Asito magic that's gonna occur in the last day, in the last 24 hours. So there is a big possibility that Hassan is actually going to be in shape, in a decent enough shape, not super shredded, that's not going to happen, but maybe he's going to be just decently shredded, decently lean, and with all this mass that he has, or should I say with all the completeness that he has that Ian lacks, like if you take a look at his physique, you will see that like his chest is big and full, his arms are some of the best arms in IBB Pro League right now, his back is also good, you're gonna see it in a second. His quads are like, you know, common Egyptian quads, like the ones of Big Ramy, like the ones of Muhammad Shaban, those Egyptians, man, they have super dominant quads and legs overall. Like, he has so many great body parts. The only problem about his physique is narrow clavicles. But, you know, that's not that much of an issue. If Phil Heath could have won seven Olympias like that, then Hassan can win freaking Toronto Pro. But this is what he doesn't have. No striations, no separations in the glutes, in the side quads, in the hamstrings. And if he is not in shape and Ian is completely shredded, then Ian is probably gonna beat Hassan, just based on conditioning and overall mass. Now, here is the thing. Maybe none of these guys are gonna win this show because we got a late entry of California Pro winner... Ross Flanning, who again won the California Pro with crazy conditioning, with insane leg development, with look at his glutes, man, look at the hamstrings and the lower back. Like, this is the kind of conditioning that we don't really see often these days. Like, we saw Dorian Yates' grainness, you know, we saw that gnarliness that we really rarely ever see these days. And if you take a look at the photos, him versus Tony Burton, you would say that Tony was robbed, that he looks better than, 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 than Ross. And he does look better, but because of Ross's conditioning, Ross could not have been ignored. And the same thing is going to happen with Ian now against Hassan Mustafa, but I don't know where to put Ross here, man, because I think he's more conditioned, more maybe he's not more grainy than Ian, but he has deeper details, more striations, 
everywhere, like glutes, hamstrings, chest, uh, he's just, I don't know, he's kind of like even more mature than Ian, like Ian looked super detailed, super mature when he was younger, but with all the muscle, he kind of lost that separation, and Ross, who is a newer guy, like he's new to the sport, I mean, more fresh than Ian, he still has those separation, and he has a lot of muscle, and he's super shredded, so this guy could win the show, sure, I don't think Mohamed Shaban is going to win it, I don't think uh, Jason Law is going to do it, uh, I don't see the other guys, any of the other guys winning this show, but as far as Ross, he has a legit chance, he might take away this victory, I think it's between these three guys, if I was a batting man, just to be sure, just to be safe, I would still bet on Ian, he is the safest bet here, but if I was gonna go wild, I would go with Ross, honestly, because of his crazy conditioning, I think it's gonna be much different in person, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that on the photos and the videos, but when somebody is bringing super crazy conditioning, that's something the judges can see, like from the front row, and that's something that is rarely ever ignored. So once again, if he brings crazy conditioning, and he, he is big, he is very big, and he has super crazy legs, and I'm expecting him to be super grainy, I don't know if that California Pro was just a good peak and he can't hit it again, but if he brings the same conditioning, he can actually win the round to pro. Now, as far as Beef Stew, he's not going to be doing any more shows, his competitive season is over, he's starting his off-season, he wants to grow, he needs to get bigger and better, and I love it. Like, he was second at New York, which was a great placement, and then he dropped down to fourth at the California Pro, which I don't think he should have done, there was no need for it, he should have just stayed there, you know, at the second spot at the New York and just went to the offseason right there and then, he didn't do it, he maybe lost some stock, some, some traction, but yeah, he's gonna do an offseason, a really good offseason, I'm sure, and he's gonna get big, bigger and better, and then, if he gets super conditioned for the next show he does, He's gonna be winning pro shows, man, next year, no doubt about that. I actually suggested the old school labs to sponsor this guy, because I think he really fits the brand, and I think he's a great guy, and I also was gonna suggest to him to start a podcast with me. I have no idea if he's gonna be interested, I still haven't sent him any messages, but I'm planning to, I know he's swimming in offers right now, I don't know which sponsor he's gonna pick, but if he actually picked Old School Labs and decided to do the podcast with me, that could be very interesting, that could make a pretty good podcast, I think, I would love to get into a podcast like everybody else, and I think this guy would jive well with me, but I don't know, we'll talk, I'll ask him, uh, if he happens to watch this, uh, this, this video, maybe he can DM me, but he probably won't see this, so I'll DM him, and uh, maybe we're gonna make some deal, I, I don't know, I hope so, we'll see. Hunter Labrada, he is definitely somebody that we are talking often about lately, somebody that people are expecting to really, you know, show something new this year, and it looks like his back has significantly improved, honestly, now as far as his conditioning at this point, it does not look good, like the glutes are having a lot of fat on him, and his lower back is not looking diced, but he still has time, I don't know how many weeks out he is, maybe like five, six weeks, so I'm sure he can get shredded, okay, maybe not shredded, shredded, but he can get lean enough, you know, enough for him to win, with all the muscle these guys have, they don't really have to get super lean, like the classy guys, for example, so if he is lean enough with all the tissue, he's gonna look hard, he's gonna look good, what I like to see are improvements, muscularity improvements, and Hunter is definitely making them, but I don't think he's making that much, of an improvement in his back as much as he's changing the posing, so he's popping out his hips, his glutes, he's uh, showing more adductor, he's not flexing his glutes to show glute separation, but when he's doing that, he's arching his spine as well, which makes his back shorter, which makes his uh, lats look thicker, and also gives him the ability to flex his lats more, so when you're doing your back double this way, you're sacrificing some glute lines, but you are receiving more lat width, and also you're showing more adductor, so I believe for him, if he's in shape also, if he's in good shape, this is probably the best variation to do the back double, because his back was a glaring weakness for him for a long time now, and I'm sure he improved his back a little, but with this different kind of posing, his back looks 
like it's a completely different dimension like completely different like really really much much better so much better that i don't know like he's definitely gonna he has to do it this way this is the way to do this pose and whatever he's doing as far as training his back it's obviously working because it's not only posing his back is definitely better so this could be the year of hunter labrada you know after placing fourth he was expected to be like one of the potential winners of the Olympia. Then he fell down to seventh last year. He lost a lot of stock. He lost a lot of fans who believed in him. A lot of people lost faith in Hunter. But I think that just gave him more drive, more energy, more uh, motivation. And now he seems more driven than ever, really. Because you can see like the, his diet is more precise, more strict more hardcore than ever like he has no protein powder in his meals he's eating all whole foods for the first time in his life and that definitely adds a lot and also he said that he was very low with gear uh, in his like in the time between the olympia and now so now he jumped up the doses he added all the whole food meals and he's changing the posing and i'm sure his training is always getting better and better because he's that type of bodybuilder who is really focused on improving his training and also when you add more gear you train better you train harder so i'm sure this is gonna be a really good year for hunter can he crack that top four at the olympia again who i don't know man I, I, it's really hard to say that because like samson derek hadi and a whole bunch of other great guys hand jacked. I mean, it's gonna be really tough for anybody to crack the top four. Is it a possibility, considering all the things that I just mentioned? Sure, yeah, it is. In order for Hunter to get to that fourth, he needs to go through a lot of really good guys. This one, for example, well, he doesn't really have to go through Nick because Nick was third, but then he was beaten by Samson, so that kind of drops Nick to fourth, but then you can argue whether the olympia was nick at his best or was it the arnold like because nick was happy with what he looked like at the arnold and he was beaten by samson samson was much better at the arnold than he was at the olympia like no doubt about that but then again nick was super full at the olympia and he was flatter especially through the legs at the arnold as you guys know and now he's going with crazy fullness for the 23 olympia as you can see in all the captions so he's gonna be much fuller and that might be enough to beat Samson. I don't know. We'll see. The reason why I'm mentioning this is this crazy, insane looking video of Nick Walker. Man, does he look big. Man, does he look massive. And he's 290 right now, as he said on his podcast with Guy Sister Nino. 289, I believe. So 290 already <laughs> and looking like an absolute monster. And especially if you consider the fact that he wants to give us fullness. <laughs> give us fullness. He literally said that in an Instagram post. He said, they want fullness, I'll give them fullness. So, give us fullness. Hell yeah. I want to see the fullest, the absolute fullest, biggest, roundest, craziest, freakiest version of Nick Walker at the Olympia. And I know that that version is going to do really freaking well. I know that that version has a legit chance of winning the Olympia. As long as the other guys are not at their absolute best. And as long as Nick is at his 100%. Yeah, he doesn't have the best waistline. But this muscle, man. this All this mass. Especially combined with crazy conditioning. That just can't be ignored. Like, you cannot ignore that stuff. That has to be rewarded. And this can be your next Olympian winner. I mean, uh, why not? Why the hell not? Look at this freaking monster right here, man. I would love to see Nick Walker win the Olympia. I would love to see him bring something insane. Man, when I saw this video, I was just like, wow. And you guys, if you follow me, you know that I compete in classic and I like classic physique, but really, I am the biggest fan of open bodybuilding. I love mass monsters. I would love to look like this, honestly. Like, I know how crazy it is and I know it's like, it's really hard to live like this and I get all that. I don't know what it takes. I have no idea what it feels like. I don't know what it's like to walk around looking like a, like a freaking real life Hulk. But when I see this, I'm amazed. I, I'm blown away because like this is not something you see every day. I never saw something like this in, in, in my life in person. But even in these videos, it's just so insane. And like 
I think this should be rewarded. I think I said right now. I'll just say it right. Now. I said it before that Samson is going to win the Olympia, but now I'm saying Nick Walker is going to win the 2023 Mr. Olympia. Now, let's wind down a little bit with all the hype. Take a look at his midsection here. Now, I was criticizing him for this, and I still have to do that. I, I have to continue because this is worrying me, honestly. Like, look at the stomach here. I mean, he's training his abs. In the caption, he says, keeping it tight. And, like, sure, his abs are tight. They are, they're, they're muscular. They're lean. They're strong. But his stomach is protruding a little bit too much, man. I don't like seeing this. I'm worried, I'm worried, like, I want to see this mass monster win the Olympia, but I don't know if his approach is right, I think he's doing something wrong, I think his physique is a bit more balanced now in terms of arm size compared to the rest of his body, I think Matt Jensen is doing a great job with that, but I don't know if he's gonna maintain a solid midsection, if he keeps getting bigger at this rate especially. So once again, he is humongous. He's bigger than ever. And he's only a couple of months after his show, the Arnold Classic. And there is still a long time until the Olympia for him to get even bigger and better. So once again, yeah, as long as his waistline stays in check decently, he is, at least for me, the favorite to win the Olympia and I would love to see that happen. What do you guys think? What do you think? Well, who would you want to win? Do you think he has a chance? Do you think his midsection is going to hurt him? Would you like to see him win? Who is your favorite to win the Olympia? Whatever your thoughts are about this video, guys, with, about whichever section, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section. Make sure also to check out the old school apps. Buy any of the supplements, guys. Just make sure to use the code DIVAN. It's going to be a great help for me. It's going to be a great support to this channel. So, guys, if you want to support me, show me some love buy any of the old school lab supplements and use the code even guys thank you thank you for watching all the best guys and bye bye